There is a principle, which is a bar against all information. Which cannot fail to keep a man, in everlasting ignorance, that principle is contempt prior to investigation. The wise man, must remember that while, he is a descendant of the past, he is a parent of the future. The great aim of education, is not knowledge but action. Life is, the continuous adjustment, of internal relations, to external relations. A living thing, is distinguished from a dead thing, by the multiplicity of the changes, at any moment taking place in it. Love is life's end, but never ending. Love is life's wealth, never spent, but ever spending. Love's life's reward, rewarded in rewarding. The ultimate result of shielding men, from the effects of folly, is to fill the world, with fools. When a man's knowledge is not in order, the more of it, he has the greater will be his confusion. No one can be perfectly free, till all are free, no one can be perfectly moral, till all are moral. No one can be perfectly happy, till all are happy. Opinion is, ultimately determined, by the feelings, and not by the intellect. Progress, therefore, is not an accident, but a necessity, it is a part of nature. The defects of the children, mirror the defects of the parents. Of all the knowledge, that most worth having is knowledge, about health. The first requisite of a good life, is to be a healthy person. Education is, preparation to live completely. Time, that which man, is always trying to kill, but which ends in killing him. Life is not for learning, nor is life for working, but learning, and working are for life. Every man is free to do, that which he wills, provided he infringes, not the equal freedom of any other man. Every pleasure raises, the tide of life, every pain lowers the tide of life. Pervading all nature, we may see at work a stern discipline, which is a little cruel, that it may be very kind. With a higher moral nature, will come a restriction on, the multiplication of the inferior. The tyrant is nothing, but a slave turned inside out. Marriage, a ceremony in which rings are put on, the finger of the lady, and through the nose of the gentleman. The most important, attribute of man, as a moral being is the faculty of self-control. How often misused words, generate misleading thoughts. All socialism involves slavery. That which fundamentally distinguishes, the slave is that, he labors under coercion to satisfy another's desires. The poverty of the incapable, the distresses that come upon the imprudent. The starvation of the idle, and those shoulderings aside of the weak, by the strong. Which leaves so many, in shallows and in miseries, are the decrees of a large, far-seeing benevolence. Every man may claim, the fullest liberty to exercise his faculties compatible with the possession of like liberties by every other man. No phrase can convey the idea of surprise so vividly as opening the eyes and raising the eyebrows. A shrug of the shoulders would lose much by translation into words. Education has for its object the formation of character. Morality knows nothing of geographical boundaries, or distinctions of race. Be bold, be bold, and everywhere be bold. Truth generally lies, in the coordination of antagonistic opinions. The preservation of health is a duty. Few seem conscious that, there is such a thing as physical morality. Education has for its object the formation of character. To curb restive propensities, to awaken dormant sentiments, to strengthen the perceptions. And cultivate the tastes, to encourage this feeling and repress that. So as finally to develop the child into a man of well-proportioned, and harmonious nature, this is alike the aim of parent and teacher. Every cause produces, more than one effect. 
The home is the most important factor in civilization, and that civilization is to be measured at different stages largely by the development in the home. Mother, when your children are irritable, do not make them more so by scolding and fault-finding, but correct their irritability by good nature and mirthfulness. Irritability comes from errors in food, bad air, too little sleep, a necessity for change of scene and surroundings, from confinement in close rooms and lack of sunshine. If men use their liberty in such a way as to surrender their liberty, are they thereafter any the less slaves? If people by a plebiscite elect a man despot over them, do they remain free because the despotism was of their own making?